This video is sponsored by Card Kingdom. If you click on the link in the description below, it'll take you to their store and they'll know I sent you there. From Innistrad to Shadowmoor, what spooky top 10 does Nitsuhon have in store? I'm Nita Hone, and this is Hildegard the Rat, and it's Friday, so that means it's time for another MTG Top 10. This is a series where I rank cards based on their historical performance at Magic's highest level of competition. And this Friday happens to be in October, and that means it's a spooky MTG Top 10, as the intro likely clued you in on. Hildy is the special co-host for this video because we're looking at rats, and rats are a somewhat maligned animal for what are mostly misconceptions about them. For example, rats are actually significantly better at keeping themselves clean than dogs. They're also highly intelligent and affectionate animals. And those misconceptions have made rats fairly popular as Halloween decorations. But you can clearly see that Hildy doesn't look a whole lot like this scary Halloween rat. But that is where this becomes a Halloween-themed video, because people think of rats as sort of spooky animals. To be eligible for this video, a card had to have either the rat creature type or be capable of making rat creature tokens. In all, there were 66 cards eligible for this list, and in this video we'll talk about the 10 that have had the biggest impact on Magic's competitive history. Before we get started, here's a quick reminder on how I score cards in these videos. A top 8 at a Pro Tour, Players Tour, Mythic Championship, Mythic Invitational, Legacy, or Vintage Championship is worth 2 points and a top 8 at a Magic Fester Grand Prix is worth 1 point. Before we get into the list in this video, I do want to talk a little bit about Hildy here. You may already know some of this if you follow me on social media, or you've heard me talk about it in a draft video or on a stream, but most of you probably haven't heard it. My wife and I foster rodents for an Oklahoma City animal rescue called Kanoa Rescue Foundation. Right now, we've got Hildy as well as 6 hamsters and 2 mice, and we actually picked up another rat in need of a foster home the day I'm recording this. We've had lots of other animals over the last year, too, and several have been adopted into new homes. Others have been more hospice situations. Kanoa does a lot of great work rescuing animals who are in really bad shape medically. You wouldn't know it now, but when we got Hildy, she had a massive mammary tumor that was about a quarter the size of her body. She had surgery and has recovered, and now she's a really happy rat that will live out her remaining days with me and my wife. But as you can imagine, this kind of medical care is expensive, and she's just one animal at the rescue. So I wanted to use this opportunity to plug Kanoa. If you want to help them to do great work rescuing animals, you can donate to them using the link in the description below. Also, if you'd rather donate to an animal rescue in your own area, you definitely should. All right, let's get to the list. At number 10, it is Rotting Rats. A lot of rats in Magic seem to involve making players discard cards. With Rotting Rats, the effect is symmetrical, forcing both players to discard. It also comes with Unearth, which means that once it's in the graveyard, you can bring it back with haste. Generally, if you're the one playing the rats, you're playing a graveyard deck, so discarding a card won't be hurting you a whole lot. A 1-1 with haste isn't exactly imposing, but you do get the Enter the Battlefield trigger all over again, which can do a pretty good job of disrupting your opponent and maybe even help you load your graveyard. Rotting Rats 1 point came in a Dredgevine deck in Modern in 2015. This was a deck filled with ways to load the graveyard and creatures who could come back from it, so the rats were a decent fit there. That said, Rotting Rats have never really become a regularly played card in the deck. At number 9, it is Crypt Rats. This is a 3-mana 1-1, which is really rough, but it has a pretty powerful activated ability. It's capable of damaging the entire board and both players. There aren't many creatures who can be board sweepers and a lethal fireball to the opponent, but that's the upside Crypt Rats has. Its one Pro Tour Top 8 came back in 1997 in a black aggro deck. Notably, Crypt Rats is also fairly heavily played in Popper. There aren't a whole lot of common sweepers out there, so the rats fits well in Popper. Popper isn't currently a format played as premier events, so I don't count it in my scoring system, but if I did, Crypt Rats would be significantly higher on this list. 
At number eight, it is Nizumi's short thing. On the plane of Kamigawa, there is a race of rat people called the Nizumi, and they'll be making multiple appearances on this list. Nizumi Short Fang is a 2-mana 1-1 with a nice activated ability. It can just make people discard cards, and it can even do it at instant speed, unlike a lot of discard effects. What's more is, if your opponent runs out of cards in hand when you use the ability, it flips into the legendary Stab Whisker the Odious. Back in 2004, Wizards hadn't come up with double-faced cards yet, but there are a bunch of cards in Kamigawa block that worked this way, and they're an obvious precursor to double face cards. Anyway, once it becomes Stab Whisker, it becomes a more formidable 3-3 and starts punishing the opponent for not having cards in their hand. The Short Fang gained both of its top 8s at the Kamigawa block Pro Tour. It'll be interesting to see if we have rat people in the upcoming Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. If we do, this list might get shaken up significantly in the near future. At number 7, it is Okiba Gang Shinobi, a rat ninja. It has the same overall score as Nizumi Short Fang, but it has a higher average finish, so I gave it the higher slot on the list. Okiba Gang Shinobi comes with the ninjutsu mechanic, which lets you switch out an unblocked creature for a ninja. Most ninjas come with the Saboteur Trigger 2, and that includes the Shinobi, who can make the opponent discard two cards. That's a pretty big hit to take, and means the Shinobi often represents a 3 for 1. The Shinobi gained all of its points in the standard of 2006, where it was played in black aggro decks. At number 6, I have Rats of Wrath. It has the exact same score as Nizumi Short Fang and Okiba Gang Shinobi, but it has the highest average finish of the three, so I gave it the higher spot on the list. Rats of Wrath may seem a bit unimpressive by today's standards, but in Tempest Block Constructed, a 2-mana two 2-1 two with upside was actually pretty reasonable. The upside here is pretty weird, since the rats can blow up your own stuff, but the deck actually put that to good use. The deck used both Corpse Dance and Living Death, and a bunch of creatures with Enter the Battlefield abilities, and the rats could help you set up both. If you had creatures on the board but wanted to cast Living Death, you could use Rats of Wrath to destroy all your creatures, and then when you cast Living Death, your opponent's stuff on the board would be destroyed, and all of the creatures you just killed would be reanimated. It could also put a creature on top of your graveyard for Corpse Dance, so you could rebuy the Enter the Battlefield ability that creature had. It doesn't gain any points outside of Tempest Block Constructed, but it was actually a super important card in the format. At number 5, it is Burglar Rat, the newest rat on this list. It's another rat that involves discarding. In this case, the opponent discards a card when it enters the battlefield. Burglar Rat was played in standard Orzhov Doom Foretold decks. These decks were really geared toward taking advantage of that eponymous enchantment, so playing anything that allowed you to take cards away from your opponent was welcome, since it would deprive them of resources so much that it would be harder for them to sacrifice something to Doom Foretold. Meanwhile, the rat provided good sacrifice fodder when the Doom Foretold triggered on your turn. The deck also used Yorion, and Burglar Rat had a nice Enter the Battlefield ability to re-trigger. It doesn't have any points since rotating out of standard. And number four is Nizumi Grave Robber. Like Nizumi Short Fang, the Grave Robber can flip into a powerful legendary creature. In this case, Night Eyes the Desecrator, which can reanimate creatures from any graveyard for five mana. To flip it in the first place, you have to exile a card from the opposing graveyard, then, if the graveyard was empty, it flipped. Obviously, your opponent wouldn't have stuff in the graveyard to go after right away, but you can reanimate from your own graveyard. And sometimes you can just exile one card and flip the Grave Robber really early, making it a huge problem for your opponent as the game goes on. The Grave Robber gained all of its points in Kamigawa Block Constructed. At number three, it is Ravenous Rats, which is very similar to Burglar Rats, except that it targets a specific opponent to make them discard. It has the benefit of being reprinted six times in standard legal sets, and it has impacted a variety of standard and block formats as a result. It's a card that works pretty well as an early disruptive creature for aggro decks, and it also fits reasonably well in mid-range and control decks that are interested in generating card advantage. At number two, it is Ink Eyes, Servant of Oni, the second rat ninja to make the list. Ink Eyes has a very powerful saboteur trigger that lets you reanimate an opponent's creature. Because of ninjutsu, this was easier to accomplish than it might look at first, and even though you return the original attacker to your hand, you're probably getting 5 mana worth of value out of ninjutsuing Ink Eyes into play. This was even more true if you return a creature with an Enter the Battlefield ability to your hand, and to top it all off, Ink Eyes can also regenerate, which means even without ninjutsu, she can attack pretty much every turn and threaten to reanimate something, since it probably isn't going to die in combat. It gained all of its points in Kamigawa Block Constructed in the standard of 2005. And at number one, it's Pack Rat. This probably doesn't come as a huge surprise to anybody, because Pack Rat is pretty insane. 
Packrat is technically a tribal payoff for rats, having power and toughness equal to the number of rats you control. That would not be a particularly good card if that's all it was, but this rat comes with an incredible activated ability. He lets you pay two generic and a black and discard a card to make a copy of him. Now, obviously, all of the copies of pack rats are rats, and they also have this text box. This means as soon as you start making copies of pack rat, it's going to be very difficult for your opponent to get things under control with anything other than a board sweeper. Things just snowball in a hurry, and oftentimes if you're playing the rat, it's just better to keep making copies of it until your opponent dies or plays a board sweeper, because that way you aren't committing any other resources to the board. Things get even sillier if you are getting extra value of putting cards in your graveyard. Packrat was a pretty dominant card in Standard. It's how the most play in Devotion to Black decks, because Packrat makes copies of itself, each copy would actually contribute to your Devotion, making your Devotion payoffs even better. However, the rats were also played in Blue Black and Orzhov Control decks. The rats stayed idle for several years after rotating, but the creation of the Pioneer format has been good news for Packrat. It's been played as a sideboard card in decks like Demir Inverter. Because that deck's a combo deck, it needs to have a sideboard plan for opponents who can disrupt the combo too easily, and Packrat is exactly that. Eventually, Demir Inverter decks got banned out of the format. Packrat is also legal in Historic, as it was included in Historic Anthology 2, and this has led to it seeing some play there as well. So far, though, it hasn't gained any points in the format. Still, it has way more points than any other rat so far in Magic, and it also has the best chance at gaining more points going forward, so it's gonna stay at number one on this list for the foreseeable future. Well, those are the 10 rats that have had the biggest impact on competitive Magic. If you wanna own any of these powerful rats, you can find direct Card Kingdom links for each of them in the description. Remember, if you wanna to donate to Kanoa Rescue Foundation, you can also find a link to that in the description. If you enjoyed this video, or you just think Hildy is super cute, don't forget to like it and share it. If you want to make sure you stay aware of future MTG Top 10s, you should subscribe and turn on notifications. And if you want to catch up on past MTG Top 10s, including several more Halloween-themed ones, you should see the playlist on your screen shortly. Lastly, if you want to give back to the channel, you can on Patreon. Thanks for watching.